that um, this is uh, a visitor from our Tanzanian cooperative. And there's a lot of different projects that are going on over there. And this is going to sum up some of those projects that are in the works. And uh, Katie from Sustainable Harvest is going to kind of give a little bit of an intro to what's going on here. And then we're going to watch the video. And uh, Serafina will uh, go through and describe some of the slides and what's going on with, uh, with the pictures and what's going on with the cooperative in Tanzania. Thanks for coming together to watch this. It's nice to have Sara Fina here. She actually was just speaking at the Clinton Global Initiative in New York. Um, she met Bill Clinton and a number of other celebrities whom you can ask her about. But um, she works for the Kenyogu Cooperative, which is part of your One Harvest line, the Kenyogu. And um, that is part of a, it started as a project of sustainable harvest where we wanted to bring the cooperative better technology to increase their coffee quality. We knew they had really great quality, but maybe not the best processing methods, so they just needed a bit of help in bringing that up to snuff. And um, it's, I guess the project's been going for about three and a half years now, um, and it's been really successful. The group won the IAFCA, which is uh, Eastern Africa, Eastern Africa's Taste of the Harvest competition last year, so it beat out Ethiopia, which is the typical winner. Um, this video that we're going to show sets up the project and explains all these different facets that came together to increase coffee quality for these uh, Tanzanians. So once we show this, we'll have um, Sarfina, who's a cupper for the cooperative and for a sustainable harvest office in Kigoma, uh, have her explain what her day-to-day -day life is like there. And if you guys have any questions, we'll answer them. So, Kigoma is a remote region of western Tanzania where farmers grow beans, cassava, bananas, and one cash crop, coffee, on their tiny plots of land. About 9,000 of these farmers belong to the Kanyogi Cooperative, and since 2007, Sustainable Harvest has been working with them to produce better quality coffee and sell it for a higher price. Because coffee is the main cash crop in the villages, at least in Kigoma region, and to increase the the income of these people by more than twice we've increased the income in, in three years. We've done farmer interviews and they're telling us that because of these higher prices they can send their kids to school this year, they can buy more farmland, they can grow more trees, they can grow more coffee and it's, it's really impacting on their lives and the lives of people around them definitely. It hasn't always been this way. For the past two decades, the Kagoma population has grown rapidly. Farmers cleared more and more land for agriculture. They earned little for their coffee and had no access to important North American and European markets. Now this partnership with Sustainable Harvest is helping to change that. When you, you work in Africa as an agronomist or extensionist, you have to make sure that whatever you want to introduce, Whatever you want to a uh, farmer to do it, you have to be patient. So when you introduce you something today, don't expect that tomorrow the farmer would adapt. They need time. So sometimes it's difficult to work, but I, 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 I love to work with African uh, farmers. Kagoma is an arid place where the dry season lasts six months of the year and fresh water is scarce. It's not at all uncommon to see women and children having to walk long distances to collect water to bring back for their families. To help the cooperative centralize its coffee processing and use less water, Sustainable Harvest introduced coffee processing machines from Colombia. <coughs> These Panagas machines require just a fraction of the water needed for traditional processing techniques. Growers trained by Sustainable Harvest oversee the processing stations and the quality of the coffee is now more consistent. Sustainable Harvest also partnered with eight communities to build water storage tanks so the families here could have more reliable access to water. <laughs> After getting that support for <coughs> building the water system from sustainable harvesting, the villagers, they are very, very happy and very excited to get that water system because they will use the time to go to the river and fetching water. Nowadays, that water out of coffee processing, 
they use duck water for drinking, they use duck water for cooking, washing their clothes, and the other things. Solving the water problem was a big step. That alone was not enough to help the farmers sell their product. A lot of people can get any was transparent. Working with Hassanaba is very helpful because there is transparency. And uh, for them, uh, transparency is very important because previously, when they were selling their coffee to auction in Moshi, uh, they, all, they believe that there is no transparency. But working with Hassanaba, there is um, uh, more and more transparency because now they can, they can talk to uh, buyers, they can discuss with farmers, and also they can discuss about the prices. For them, that is very important. The cooperative has also begun using an online tracking system developed by Sustainable Harvest. They've learned to use a computer for the first time and are now logging information online instead of keeping paper and pencil records about the coffee delivered by farmers. This allows the co-op to interact more easily and efficiently with their business partners throughout the supply chain. First of all, I don't, I, I don't believe what is happening now. I don't believe the situation. I don't believe. Because when we started the project here, and uh, when you go around in, in the village, you can find people, they were drank their coffee on the floor because they didn't know what they believed, that uh, coffee means after they have harvested and then uh, drank, and when it goes to the market, it's only they're being sold like maize. So they didn't care of quality, how to improve their quality. But now I can see people have changed. They have changed the world. They have changed because uh, in order to get good money, it means we have to produce good quality. Now, with coffee providing a valuable income, farmers are seeing an economic incentive to reforest the area because coffee grows better under a shade canopy. That's good news for the chimpanzees in the nearby Gombe National Park, where Jane Goodall did her groundbreaking research. The reforestation efforts are creating a buffer around the park to protect the chimpanzees' habitat. The cooperative worked with Sustainable Harvest to establish a tree nursery and distribute seedlings to farmers who've already planted 135,000 trees. Sustainable Harvest agronomists have taught the farmers organic production practices using local farm waste Growers have learned to make compost fertilizers that will help them nourish their plants and boost coffee yields without chemicals. And Sustainable Harvest staff maintain an ongoing dialogue with the farmers, teaching them about producing high-quality coffee, coffee good enough to sell to the specialty market. The acidity was medium acidity, it was not high, it was not low, it was medium. It was clean after a test, and I think this coffee, after we settled, it will be good. It will be a good coffee. So I think it needs to rest. Yeah. Yeah. I think so far you are doing well. Congratulations and keep on doing well. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Can you ever very recently when the taste of the harvest award, which meant they have the best coffee in East Africa, which has people were very surprised about because you know we're up against Ethiopia and countries that traditionally have really high quality coffee. And even within Tanzania, you know, Kigoma region is not, not the famous region for coffee growing. It's Moshi and Arusha, so it caused quite a stir and um, has definitely put Kigoma on the map. And buyers are really interested in this cooperative now. Like, where's this great quality suddenly popped up from? So now our real job is to, to increase the volume, to increase the quantity of coffee we are getting out of Kanyoga Cooperative. And hopefully get more farmers having the high prices that the farmers last year achieved. <laughs>